The cyber fraud threat landscape for the financial services industry is constantly evolving. Emerging risks are being exploited by advanced nation state cyber criminal and hacktivist threat actors to target the sector in espionage, data theft, and criminal operations. To counter these threats, organizations have to think about programs that safeguard clients' information and transactions, leveraging partnerships with industry and government to quickly assess and mitigate any risk. I'm delighted to say we're joined now by J.F. Legault, Deputy CISO J.P. Morgan. Welcome to Cyber Thank you. TV. Thanks, Thanks for, for having me. So it's an absolute pleasure. Our pleasure indeed. Uh, I'll start off, J.F., by asking you, what is the current threat landscape? It seems to change so much each year. Where are we at now and it, what threats are we seeing? Yeah, it's always evolving, but there's always a constant aspect to it. So, you know, when you look at the overview, You've got a number of nation state actor groups that are motivated by a variety of different intents. So some of them are very, very focused on espionage. So gathering information in furtherance of the motivations of government in furtherance of their economy. You've got other nation state groups that are heavily sanctioned. So they're looking for ways to procure funds in much more of a gray economy. So they are looking to target financial institutions and companies with the intent of you know, collecting money, cryptocurrency and the likes. And then you've got other you know, nation states that are heavily, heavily focused on disruption. And then when you look at the criminal actor groups, you've got some that are heavily focused on hacktivism. So either in support of a nation state, in furtherance of some other philosophical motivation. And then, you know, we need to talk about ransomware. Ransomware keeps on happening. There's always ransomware stories in the news. And it's interesting when you look at that evolution, right, where a threat actor group started off targeting home users and saying, like, you know, if you don't give us $100 in cryptocurrency, we're going to encrypt their family pictures. And then they realize there's actually a business model targeting very large organizations and disrupting their supply chain. And, and that's where you know, it becomes incredibly important for financial institutions to not only look at themselves, but look at their entire ecosystem because disruption can come from you know, clients that are being impacted. It can come from third parties, vendors that are suffering some form of impact. So when you start to break it down, you know, it's always looking at the actor groups from their capabilities and their intent depending on who you are and what steps you take to mitigate that activity. Mm -hmm. So those are the, the threats that you're focused on now, but what's emerging? Well, it, it's always looking at you know how actor groups are, and, and, and the, these threat actors are gonna leverage evolution in technology, right? So like, the analogy I always use is like, if you build a better mousetrap, they're gonna build a better mouse. Mm. And you know the, the the super simple one that is easy uh, to, to like cover off is when you think of how everybody has been trained to look for phishing emails, right? Look for typos, look for grammatical errors, look for those types of things. And now today, you know, th there's a variety of technologies like AI is coming in, so it's. It's simpler for an actor to have a very, very well written email mm. that they can send to people. So when you look at the evolution of the threat landscape, it's about following the geopolitical world and seeing like which nation state actor groups are being uh, you know, uh, involved in different types of conflicts. Uh, it's looking at where money can be made. It's looking at the evolution if you take you know, actor groups like North Korea, they were targeting the financial ecosystem, they moved to cryptocurrency because it was easier for them to move money. So when you start aligning the geopolitical landscape and uh, money movement, that's when you see like where the actors are going. Mm -hmm. You mentioned uh, ransomware. Uh, there, could we could we dig into that for a second? Yeah. What, what what are we what are we talking about there exactly? So what happens is, you know, and going back, I started a little bit on the history of where it started happening. You know, we had a global pandemic. Organizations had to shift employees to work from home, so that meant that they stood up a lot of capabilities from a remote access perspective, mm. and they did it in many cases overnight. Mm. So that opened up a number of vectors for 
quote unquote bad guys to gain access into organizations. So, you know, normally you'll see ransomware start with some form of credential theft, remote access uh, into the organization, and then they move laterally and they'll go for the crown jewels and then encrypt the systems. And when you start to break down those attacks, there's controls that you can have to prevent them, but a lot of this is about readiness. It's about how organizations are preparing themselves for these types of attacks. So running uh, a large number of like tabletop exercises to see how the organizations react. Um, running you know, no notice drills, meaning how do you test your security incident uh, response procedures by creating fake ransomware on your network and see how quickly people will be able to deal with it. And it's also when you study a lot of these attacks, they're on the network. Some of them are on the network for an extensive period of time. And some of them are there for a very short period of time. So it's like understanding how actors operate so that you can quickly mitigate and contain the activity. But you know, there's a saying in cybersecurity, it's not a question of if, but when. So being ready to deal with these types of attacks are, it's absolutely essential for an organization to know and to test out these practices and to have really all of the parties in the organization capable of doing so. It's kind of interesting, you know, when I, I meet with a lot of our clients and it's actually great to see now that the conversations are happening across you know, the, the business, so the treasury organizations, the payment organizations, and the security organizations. Because historically, you know, I've, I've been doing this for a very long time. It was very, very siloed. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, the, the threat landscape recently has made it so that you've got more and more organizations that have close partnerships internally and that's really the key to success mm. overall. Mm. You mentioned the geopolitical landscape. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit about where these threats are coming from? What do we know? You have a number of countries that have been heavily sanctioned by OFAC uh, that have, you know, really nothing to lose in terms of sanctions that are heavily involved. So you've got a number of nation states that are out there, and then you have a number of actor groups that are criminal in nature. So their intent is really to collect as much money as they can uh, from, you know, corporations that they're targeting from individuals so it'll range from you know account takeover from a retail banking perspective to attempted money movement uh, in large organizations and that's why like conferences like Cybos are so important because they bring together payment professionals and there's an opportunity uh, to have that level of dialogue across you know the, the organizations. Mm. Now, sadly, we are running short for time, but I do want to get this question out before yeah. we, we, we leave you, Jay. I want to talk about uh, artificial intelligence. Yep. It's such a huge point at Cybos this year uh, and in, you know, in the world at large. How is that altering uh, the threat landscape at the moment uh, for better or for worse? I, it, it's, it's interesting because you can break it down into three different areas. The first one is really how can bad guys use it? then it's really about how cybersecurity professionals can use it. So, you know, looking at the use of AI to simplify decision making, to accelerate decisions in a security context. And then it's really how do organizations secure AI overall to ensure that the models that they're building can't be compromised or can't be used by an adversary. It's, a, it's such an interesting conversation and one that, as you say, will continue to evolve and change uh, over the coming months and years. J.F. Legault, Deputy CISO at J.P. Morgan, thanks so much for chatting with us. Thank you for having me.